Let's say we have created a material like this in Blender. And it is a procedural material. We have created it using the shader node tree. Now we want to export this material as a texture image for another software. So we'll learn how we can bake it and export this procedural material into an image file. We can directly use this object if it has a flat surface like this, but it is better to use a separate plane. So let's hide this cube. We'll add a simple plane here from the add menu. Now we have to assign the same material for this plane, which is the procedural material. And we have to ensure that it has got a vivid lighting with clear display and no shadow. We can see that we have used a sun type light in this composition with a strength of four, and we have used a procedural background for the world lighting with HDRI. We can also take a look at the node tree in the shader editor. So here is our setup for the world lighting, and we have used an HDRI file. You can also use a simple background node instead of this, but HDRI lighting works always better, as it gives a more natural output. Now we have to select the plane that we have added with the target material, and we'll switch over to the object option from here. So here is the node tree for the procedural material, and we will now export this material. First, we have to go to the Add menu, and from the texture group, we'll add an image texture node, and we have to place this node somewhere in this node tree. We don't need to connect this node to any other node, it could just stay here stand alone like this, but it should be selected and highlighted. If we deselect it like this, it won't work. So we have to ensure two things. First, this object has to be selected and highlighted, which we can confirm in the outliner. And then this image texture node needs to be selected and highlighted in the shader editor. Now here we can change its parameters, like we can give it some name. It can be any name like texture. And here is the resolution of the output image. You can decide what resolution you need and enter here. We'll go with just 1K. Now let's click on the new image button, and the baking option is only available in cycles, so in the render properties, we'll switch over to the cycles option. Then under sampling, under the render section, we have to decide on the number of samples, since the default value is too high. We can go with 128 for this example, but you can use a higher sample for a better result. Finally, we'll go to the bake section, baking the selected material will give us a texture output. We can start the baking process by using this bake button. But before that, we can see some options here. We can change the bake type from here. We can use the default combined, which gives a combined output. Or we can bake individual parts like normal, or roughness and others. Let's go with combined. Then we also have some lighting options here. For example, if there is an indirect light in the scene, we can turn it off. But we don't have indirect lighting, so it does not matter. We need to keep the direct lighting always enabled. Unless we have some emission type material, and we want to export only emission. Now we can start the baking process, and the progress is displayed here. It depends on the resolution and the number of samples. Once it is complete, we want to see the output. So let's divide the screen into two parts. We have the shader editor here, and in the upper section, we'll open the image editor. Then we have to select the new image which we have named as texture. But we see that it is completely black. This is an issue that many of you have reported. It happens due to a mistake which we often overlook. If we go to our viewport, we can see the plane, and it is very well visible. However, the cube is actually hiding this plane in the render output. We have turned it off for the viewport, but that's not enough, we have to also hide it from render. So we have to ensure that the target plane is clearly visible in render from above the surface. Now we'll select this node, we have to select the plane, and we can bake the texture once again. So this time we can see that the texture output is very clear, just like the original material, and its details will depend on the number of samples and the resolution of the image. Now we want to save this image permanently, so we can do that here using one of these menu options. Then likewise, we can also bake a single element like the normal. We have some options like the mapping between the normal vector and the RGB channels. We can just go with the default option and start the baking process. Once complete, we'll get an image file like before for the normal, and we have to then save this image file somewhere on our machine. We can use these image files to reproduce the material in another software. So I hope you like this tutorial, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.